Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match preview of the big one. It's the Champions League. It's the win or bust game. Certainly it can be seen as a must win game. Chelsea's match against Valencia away in Group H. Epic. I'm sure a lot of you know this group has three teams on seven points. Ajax, Chelsea and Valencia. Sadly for Lille it looks like they are cooked. If Chelsea win this game away in Spain then I reckon they could draw to Lille and hell maybe even lose. Basically Chelsea are going to be fine if they win this game. They went away to Ajax in one, they went away to Lille in one. Could they get the third and final away win in the Champions League group? We're going to be talking about that in today's video. Speaking of Champions League and epic games, I've just played the Champions League final on my other channel, Yan Plays, one of the most intense games I've played on the FIFA series so far. I urge you guys to go check out and subscribe to Yan Plays. The link is in the top of the description. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to Football Therapy, please do. And why not hit the bell notifications icon, like the video, help your boy out. Right, let's get into the video. So, like previously stated, this game is really big and important. I want to talk about what happened in the reverse fixture in this game earlier in the group. A game that I went to and experienced terrible football, <laughs> in my opinion. Let's talk about that. Let's open up the analysis page. Right, next to me is the Who Scored Match Centre for that game Chelsea lost at home at Stamford Bridge in the group stages against Valencia. As you can see, the glaring weird thing about this game is Frank Lampard was still using his back three formation. This was just after Chelsea won away at Wolves 5-2 when they used said formation. And I think this was the opening group stage game in the Champions League. Lampard obviously came off such a positive result using this formation and wanted to guarantee in his mind the first win in the Champions League at home. Remember, I think at that point, Frank Lampard hadn't actually won a game at home yet. So I think he said, look, this really works well at Molyneux, let's just do it at home in the Champions League. I looked at that lineup when it came out and thought negatively of it. I thought he bottled it. I thought, look, play your normal game at home, your attacking game with your preferred players and their preferred positions against this Valencia side, rather than doing this wing back system. It worked so well against Wolves because it was that classic matching up a back three with a back three counter. Um, when Antonio Conte won the Premier League with Chelsea playing that system, towards the end everyone was doing the back three system to try and counter Antonio Conte's system. Obviously a bad example of this not working was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doing it the other day against Sheffield United. United were absolutely awful when they were playing the back three and only got into the game when they switched to a back four. Anyway, I digress. Valencia play a 4-4-2 and will always play a 4-4-2 at the moment. They did at Stamford Bridge, they have been recently in league games and they will at home in the Champions League against Chelsea. When Chelsea lost 1-0, to Valencia. They had loads of sort of benign empty wing back possession where they weren't doing proper cutbacks to midfielders or the forward to try and get goals. It looked really sort of like toothless for ages. Hopefully, you'd hope Frank Lampard would look at that game and be like, you know what, dude, no way I'm doing that again. I'm going to play what we know best. So, breathe in the Valencia lineup there because we know they're going to play a 4 4 2. The front two will probably remain the same, even if midfield is maybe, you know, exchange. We don't know exactly what lineup they'll put out, but 4 4 2, like I said. So, let's switch over to a couple of potential Chelsea lineup. Boom, boom, right. For me, rotation might come into a personnel, but it's going to be either the 4-3-3 that we saw against Manchester City that works pretty well at times when Chelsea lost recently at the Etihad and it did so well against Liverpool twice. Yes, he lost all those games, but in terms of high possession opposition, it's very good at controlling the game, the midfield free of uh, Kovacic, Jorginho and Kante. If he wants to go for the jugular and score goals, he will do his 4-2-3-1 with Mason Mount in the number 10. I have a feeling he might do this because... I feel like Valencia will try and counter-attack with a 4-4-2 and as long as they've got the right personnel to be better in transition, Chelsea will be okay. I think really he needs to be starting Azpilicueta at left back and Reese James at right back in this game. Putting Emerson straight back in after a poor performance against City away in Valencia is probably not the best idea. So I do see him going with his preferred centre-back partnership yet again of Zuma and Tomori. 
I think personally, as Pulicueta will start at left back, we'll see Reese James at right back. Tammy Abraham will almost certainly start up front, but I've got a slight inkling that maybe Batshuayi will. I don't think, probably Tammy, but I've just got a weird feeling about Michi. And I do think it will be Pulisic and Willian on the wings again. Hudson Adoy has had a bit of a niggling injury, whether he'll be fit or not, I'm not sure, but I do see Pulisic and Willian starting, and really, Really what it comes down to is it going to be the midfield flat three of what I said, the more controlling approach of Kovacic, Jorginho and Kante, or is he going to play a deep midfield two pivot of, uh, well, either Jorginho and Kovacic. Remember, they've had an amazing partnership, but Kante was by far Chelsea's man of the match away at the Etihad. So you think, all right, what, Jorginho and Kante? Because remember, Jorginho can play those balls up to Tammy Abraham, but then again, Kovacic's ball to Kante, God, where does it leave us? So, you know, pick the two out of the three for that pivot, and then you've got Mason Mount playing in the number 10 role. It will be one of these two formations, in my opinion. What's really important for me as well is that Frank utilizes his substitutions well. The substitutions he made against Manchester City didn't really switch up enough. Chelsea did look a lot better when they had Mount on the pitch in terms of linking up the defence slash midfield with attack. Him and Tammy Abraham combining very, very well as they always have throughout the age groups. I would feel more comfortable going forward knowing that both Tammy and Mason are on the pitch together. Frank Lampard needs to be brave and doesn't and can't be scared of Valencia. That's what I thought happened in the return fixture at Stamford Bridge. I thought he was a bit scared. He needs to believe in his system and his philosophy and his approach of going forward and scoring goals. Sure, Valencia are a good side. Sure, their stadium looks intimidating and big. Big up George Benson at the moment. He's done the match previews out there. He spoke of how intimidating it looks, like a proper football stadium. But the kid should be fearless, and so should Frank Lampard. So I personally believe he should play the 4-2-3-1 with Mason Mount playing in the hole linking it up. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about this match in the Champions League generally and get rid of this analysis page. So the other game, Ajax will be playing Lille. And to be honest, man, even though Lille had moments against Valencia in the last game, in fact, they were leading for the vast majority of the game until they just sort of collapsed at the end and conceded, what, two or three goals? I think they might have lost it 3-1 in the end or something. Regardless, they lost convincingly at the end. I don't think they can do anything against this Ajax side. This Ajax side is very, very good. And much like Chelsea, they don't give up until the end, as we saw when they had nine men and they were trying to go for a winner at Stamford Bridge. So you pretty much bank on Ajax beating them and getting all three points. So Chelsea kind of have to beat Valencia in my opinion. You could say, all right, maybe get a draw and then on the last day, Chelsea play Lille or have to maybe bat them and get a large goal difference or something. But really, Chelsea need to be looking to, to put this to bed, this group, know they've got qualified, go for it, score goals and get the win because Chelsea are a better side than Valencia. That loss at home, the one nil loss was really an anomaly and for me, for my opinion and my money, it was because Frank basically, he played a formation that worked as a counter to another formation. He played it against a 4-4-2. He knew it was going to be a 4-4-2. It was just loads of sort of, like I said, benign possession, wing back possession, nothing happened. He needs to go with what he knows, what his team knows, what they've recently been playing well, and just believe in themselves, not get intimidated by the atmosphere, and just get the job done. Right, here's where I nail my colours to the mast and do some predictions. <laughs> Valencia will be very resolute. They've got good players, they can finish, they can counter-attack, and this will be huge for them, this game. Remember, when they came to Stamford Bridge, they were in crisis with all the sort of controversies going on with their club and stuff. Even if that's all a bit more settled now, Actually, that's worse if that's more settled now. Hmm. They did lose last time out, but maybe they were just saving themselves for this game, which is going to be massive for them. As it is for us, I've got to back Chelsea to win this. Chelsea are the better side. Frank Lampard, he plays a 4-3-3. He plays a 4-2-3-1. Kepa's low on confidence. The defence isn't perfect. I see Chelsea conceding a goal, but I see them scoring goals. I see it being a bit of a ding-dong. I want Chelsea to score. I think Chelsea are going to win, and I'm going to predict a scoreline here of... Chelsea 3, Valencia 2. A draw is not the end of the world. It kind of leaves Chelsea kind of in charge of their own destiny a bit. If it was a draw, Chelsea would probably just be second favourites to qualify because Valencia have to play Ajax and you have to back Ajax to beat him. Um, but yeah, Chelsea get the win. They're home and hosed in my opinion. 
Anyway, what do you lot think? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on this game. What do you think is going to happen? How well do you think Chelsea can do in the Champions League? Who do you expect to see in the starting lineup in this game? Get down in the comments below and let me hear your thoughts and opinions. And remember, if you've enjoyed this video, please do like the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Remember my plug for the beginning of the video? Do go and subscribe to Yam Plays. It's loads of fun. Get really into it. I'm interacting with all you guys in the comments and pretty much playing the career mode with you guys and getting your input so it's very interactive what else oh yeah you can join the discord server if you like and talk to me and the rest of the members of the goat gang about chelsea and football link down in the description patreon link oh yeah follow me on social media at football yannick on both instagram and twitter that's it from me everyone you lot enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby